My name is Adam Sharp. I'm co-founder uh, at, at Clever Touch. Um, today's session is um, around sales and marketing alignment, uh, bridging the gap, or reinventing the relationship. Um, in terms of the agenda, it's quite busy. I will we'll make up some time, uh, but we, so we will finish at that um, at 10 to 12. We've made that commitment. In terms of the agenda, um, lots of speakers today. Slightly different format. Um, in that uh, we've got Jamie on. Jamie's a Clever Touch employee, uh, talking about some of the um, things he's seeing when working with clients. He's going to talk a little bit about around, around sales intelligence. Matt's our real-life marketing person. Uh, he's going to talk about how we do sales and marketing alignment inside our own business. Then we've got a quick break. Then we've got uh, uh, Marinda from Salesforce, again, talking about how Salesforce do their sales and marketing alignment. And then we've got a panel discussion. Um, so uh, here are sort of uh, the, the names to the faces. Um, Matt over there. So there we've got uh, Marinda, as I say, from, from Salesforce. Uh, Jamie's singled out here because he's, uh, he's the only non-marketeer here, so he's the one to throw bread at. Um, and, then, uh, and then Cheesy, uh, a lot of people don't really, they, we often get questions and ask whether Cheesy actually exists, or is he just a chat bot on the website? Um, but he does exist, and, and you'll hear and see him later on. Uh, and then we're delighted to have uh, two uh, guest speakers, both clients of Clever Touch. We've got Deborah Taylor from uh, uh, Colorcom. Colorcom are uh, a, a global pharmaceutical, niche pharmaceutical business. When I say niche, you still employ about 800 people, as I understand it. Is that about right? Oh, 2,000. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, no. My intelligence from LinkedIn is a little bit out of date, but there we go, 2,000. Um, and then we've got Tracy uh, Ryan from Natabox. Natabox are uh, uh, more of a tech startup, as I understand it supporting and providing technology, telephony technology, in and around uh, Salesforce uh, environment. And uh, I believe they're, uh, in terms of size, around about 100 employees. So, so you're going to get perspectives from a, a large organization and a, and a smaller organization as well. Um, in terms of a little bit about Clever Touch, uh, we're not here to sell our services, but sometimes we forget to actually talk about who we are and what we do. So um, uh, this is the one slide, I think, we'll talk about the business. Um, so. We kicked off about 10 years ago. We specialize in this MarTech space, so this is our agenda. Um, we want to be, say, seen as someone who's providing a little bit of thought leadership into the, this space. There isn't that much thought leadership going on at the moment. There just is a frenzied mess of uh, vendors coming into the space. So when we kicked off, there's about 100 companies now. There's about 7,000 all pushing technology, and we think there's a smarter way of working. Um, you'll see some of the, the logos of the companies we work up th with up there. Um, London Stock Exchange, one of the reasons we love to do our events here is because they're, they're a big client of ours. They use both our services and our software to integrate their um, uh, Pardot instances, of which I think they have about nine or ten here. Um, and then and we've just, um, uh, this is our latest little badge at the bottom there, we've just been awarded a, a two-star company is the best case, uh, company to work for. So we just missed the three star by four points um, out of 750 odd or whatever. So uh, we'll find out in January whether we make the, uh, the Sunday Times best company to work for. So, um, uh, <coughs> and, and, and based on the, uh, the, the, the activity at our Christmas party on Friday, um, that, that award was uh, very enthusiastically received and toasted. Okay. Um, so, yeah, as I say, part of our, our responsibility, if you like, is try and um, raise issues around this space and try and do it in a responsible way. Um, the idea of these sessions is we typically get about half people coming here are customers. Those are either prospects or people who are just here to learn, and that's good. We want to provide that, that sort of that, that, that learning vibe, and we, we do these events sort of four or five times a year on different themes. Um, and, and, and recently, uh, some of you might have seen some of, our, um, some of the ads that... Uh, we sponsored, we, we got the marketunist to um, try and um, highlight some of the issues in the space. Uh, we, we, frankly, as a, as a company, believe that there's a, there's a massive emphasis on the, the deployment of the technology and a random emphasis on the development of individuals and the skills management. Uh, so um, there we are. We're trying to be a little bit honest, uh, but that's, uh, and hopefully humor works. And... Uh, one thing we did actually learn by running all these, these uh, cartoons was it was an incredible source of lead generation, which um, I'm sure uh, Cheesy will cover later on as well. Uh, this is our favorite one, which is the one we had to put it in here as well. Uh, again, talking about the war for talent, there's a massive shortage of skills and organizations underprepare in this space. So we're trying to get some of that messaging out there into the marketplace. 
Um, so, um, uh, did anyone laugh at that one? Or is it just me? Okay, great. Okay, good. Okay, so, um, and then around about that, um, this thought leadership stuff, uh, something I've been asked to, uh, to mention to you all as well is that we've just done a, um, some research into over 200 marketing automation users, both in Europe, UK, and EMEA, just to see if there's cultural nuances, there's different ways of approaching adoption and implementation. And this report will be available fairly soon, I think in the next month or so. Is that about right, Kate? Okay, so if you want that, please put it on your feedback forms, let us know, and we'll happily send it to you, um, whether you like it or not. Um, but uh, that'll be coming your way as well. So that'll be fine. No one's actually done that sort of study in, in the past. Okay, right, back to today's agenda, if that's okay. So um, we did a little um, survey. We always uh, like to survey the, the, the registrants on these events just to get a feel and to play it back to you as well. Um, so what I would say, we ordinarily look for at least 30 responses. This time they were very low, so you can take some of those, those numbers with a pinch of salt. Had we got 30, then you'd know that the results were quite reliable. That is, if we did them again, we'd probably get similar sort of results. Uh, but anyway, it's still quite nice to, to share some of these numbers with you. So the uh, question was, is it vital? Absolutely, overwhelmingly. Um, um, uh, the, the view from, from, you, from you as an audience is that it's pretty vital to do this sort of stuff. Uh, how do you view sales and marketing alignment inside your business? Uh, well, you know, it's a little bit... Uh, worrying that there's very little alignment here. Uh, only a few of you in green are fully aligned and, and the rest sort of somewhere in the middle. Um, primarily you can provide some sales intelligence but the alignment isn't really there. So um, and uh, one thing I'm very clear on is that um, sales and marketing alignment needs to come from the top down. So uh, if you're not getting it from your, your chief exec in the C-level, maybe it's because they don't necessarily understand marketing in the way that you guys do as well. So here's our sort of um, uh, list. Some of you might have seen this slide before, but you know, what is the purpose of marketing around the, the C-suite? I think there's probably eight, eight parameters from which you could probably build that case as well. Every business is different. You're all at different levels of maturity and, 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 and in different markets, but just maybe uh, you should build and, and, and reinforce the purpose of marketing and build your own story as well. One of our clients, JLL, said, you know, their, their role is to market marketing inside the business as well. So educating people on what you think is the purpose of marketing, I think, is, is fundamental. Um, in terms of uh, what do you guys see as the biggest challenge to aligning sales and marketing, uh, this is quite interesting. It's manual processes and operations. So again, one of the reasons we want to implement this stuff is to try and drive out those spreadsheets, try and drive out those manual processes of reinventing um, and relying on individual heroics to get stuff done. They're not scalable. You know, you are not scalable. Technology is. Um, and I underline the word operations here as well because there is, um, again, many years ago when I worked at IBM, I used to cross the street to avoid the operations people. They were like the military police. Um, they were great at saying no. But um, increasingly, marketing operations now, a lot of organizations have had sales operations they haven't had marketing operations, but marketing operations is a really big growth area. And if you are going to be successful implementing or building out a technology stack, uh, marketing operations is something or a someone you might definitely want to invest in as well. Um, uh, now, why did I, uh, I can't even remember why I, I, I write, put the circle around that one. There we are, so we'll move on. Uh, oh, it was the misalignment. There we go, right, okay. So. It comes back to models as well. So um, many of you have been to these events before. You might have seen, uh, we, we often talk about uh, the old and new world. We, we use the example of Microsoft and how they're inventing their modern marketing. They talk about their old world and new world. Um, and, and the old world that we were brought up in was this world of marketing was about thought leadership and content and creative and fluffy stuff and thought leadership. And then sales ran everything else. And, and a lot of organizations uh, the sales functions still like that, that status quo. You know, they are, it's like in B2B, uh, sales is often perceived here, and marketing is seen as a subservient service provider, which is a bit of a shame. Um, <clears throat> certainly these books here, one very marketing-led, the other one sales-led. Uh, Digital Body Language is written by the, the founder of um, um, one of the MA uh, technologies out there. 
and and uh, and in that book, and then the Challenger sale, which was sponsored by Google, so there's a slightly uh, agenda there. Uh, the Challenger sale talked about this idea of you know the buying process going down to here before sales even know about it, and inherently you know you know that's sort of true. Different businesses have different metrics, but the model makes sort of sense. But it isn't linear. It isn't doesn't start and end with with an email. Uh, you'd need that blended, aligned approach. And so the, the, the idea that maybe a campaign starts um, in, you know, in sales or, or starts with some, some clever targeting rather than just an email blast, uh, you know, we're not in that transactional world of B2C. Frankly, B2B is richer, it's harder. Um, and according to Joel at B2B Marketing, you're also paid more as well. But it is a tougher job than that transactional space as well. But... Um, Inventing or using technology to build a smarter, blended approach makes perfect sense. Um, in terms of how do you see marketing technology improving sales and marketing collaboration in your business? Uh, well, the, the two big points here are providing a centralized view. That's absolutely right that you haven't got this duplication of technologies. Um, and the second one is increased accountability. And it's great that marketers want to take on that responsibility and accountability, the idea of proving that ROI as well. Uh, has investing in, in marketing technology improved things for you? Well, uh, the two uh, big stakeholders here are those that have said yes, which is great, fabulous. Uh, not sure it's still okay. Give them time, I'm sure they'll go up here. And then there's still quite a lot of you that don't have marketing automation yet. Um, and and we, we try and look at the adoption of marketing automation at the moment. We think it's around about 15 to 20%. So it's still a, a long way to go. And you do see the industries drop like this. So it started in tech, went to publishing, uh, events are very strong, business services, advanced manufacturing. And now we're seeing uh, industries like recruitment and even legal uh, waking up to MA now as well. Um, the great thing about that accountability and bringing it all together is this is entirely possible. Well, this is a software company using Salesforce and Pardot. Um, so here is, you know, the great thing about joining up these systems and having that common database is that you can have a different view, a different lens, be it from sales and marketing. So this is the software company that specializes in library management systems. Here is one of their campaigns. This is one of their marketing dashboards for reporting. Um, but they also have another view, which is the sales uh, perspective as well. And it's showing marketing's contribution to, um, to, 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 uh, to, to the sales function as well. And that's one of the most important things about marketing today. Marketing has to get businessy. You know, we love the creative side of it, but as soon as we get commercial, as soon as we get businessy, we frankly get taken a little bit more seriously at, at, the, uh, at you know, the executive board level as well. So two reports, very easy to champion the business. The marketing one looks at campaign success, opt-ins, opt-down, all that data-driven privacy and so forth. This one's looking at cold, hard metrics and facts. And every business should be able to get to this within three to six months of implementing the likes of Pardot and Salesforce. Um, and, and this is the problem you have, and we talked about this a lot at our last event, is that this is the noise, this is the chart we so often see and it drives me nuts because it's not a strategy. It's just a coherent mess of brands. It just shows the amount of money that's been thrown at marketing. But certainly the climate in the Silicon Valley now is now moving such that organizations are now looking at the economic financial viability of these organizations um, beyond just the, the technical features they have. And so we take reference. We talk... Um, Again, we, we met up with uh, Joel from B2B Marketing, the editor there, and you know, he's now got his new Marketing Stack Awards. And this idea of driving out the stack as quickly as you possible, possibly can makes no sense to us. You know, we, we take inspiration from, from, um, from nature and, and talk a lot about the spine. You know, if, if, if the stack was such a great thing to get to in a real frenzied hurry, then, then we would have brains in our fingertips. Um, and so this really is your spine. This has got to be the most important thing you do as marketeers, B2B marketeers, to get the, the core basics in place, the web, the CMS system, MA in the middle, and CRM. Then you can build out that, that level two of, um, of, of, of secondary technologies as well. Okay, so how is your marketing department uh, perceived? Uh, well, this actually, you know, I, I lamented at this one. If you're only seen as the source of leads, then, then um, 
then that, that's a bit of a shame um, because I think marketing is way more important than this. Again, it goes back to educating people inside the business, the purpose of marketing. And, and you've got to be clear on it yourselves as well. Um, and, and what he actually I think is even uh, more lamentable is that it's all about the number. You know, so the metric in your businesses is the number of leads, not the quality. Um, yeah, sure, if you know your revenue goals and you know your average deal value rate and your conversion rates, you can work out the number. But, but surely marketing should be more than just the number. Um, uh, <clears throat> so here we go. Yeah, so, you know, is the number really key? Well, yes, I guess, because the sales function will, will always say that there's never enough. Um, and from the you know, CEO's perspective, he's going to be looking at the sales function thinking, well, he or she is going to be looking at the sales function thinking, they're a really expensive resource. How do we feed them? How do we fuel the funnel? Um, but, but surely pure number is, is too simplistic. And hopefully, um, hopefully our marketing manager will, will cover that today as well. Um, uh, so how is your marketing department perceived? Uh, so they are, you're seen as a source of leads, um, and for others, they're responsible for events and creative. And, um, you know, I, I think here it's, it's that's a sad place to be. Here it's okay, but I, it's a shame that we haven't got more here. I think this is the responsibility of marketing now. The business model that you're, working to, uh, you're in has to support a new digitally competent company. That means new, new models of going to market, new structures. So you need to challenge the status quo. Um, it's not going to come from anywhere out inside the business apart from marketing as well. So if your role is just, um, just sort of content and events, then I think you're, you're probably here on the sort of the, 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 the roadmap. And, and I'm really encouraging all marketers to get up there, you know, it's okay to be a, a respected service provider to, uh, to the sales function, um, but I think you need to be up the top there, being a, a change agent, challenging the business and coming up with new initiatives and new ideas as well. Uh, right, so, um, sorry for the, the, the typo here. So um, this is actually, this is a slide from one of our clients. Um, this is using Tableau, um, analyzing their, their um, prospect database or their customer database by job titles. So, um, again, we, we can, there's, there's so much data out there now that we can capture and we can analyze, but it's also got to be usable. In this format, it's not usable. You know, if you think about your marketing strategy being around positioning, segmentation, and targeting, how would you target any campaigns to that lot? It's about clustering it and keeping it together. So, today, I'm sure you'll see a lot of uh, dashboards, but um, increasingly, I think Jamie's going to cover it as well. Um, organizations now are moving beyond those dashboards, those dashboards we showed earlier and talking a lot more around sales intelligence. Sales intelligence is a great way to get credibility with the rest of the organization um, and a great way to drive sales and marketing alignment.